Hi, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to my shop. Today's video is a bit of a safety video. I build tube amps, so I build guitar amps here, and I also build hi-fi amps. And within the circuitry of a tube amp, it lies extremely high voltages. So I'll show you here in this hardware amp that I made. You can see these capacitors here. Um, they actually have residual voltage in them. So even when the amp is unplugged, uh, there's still voltage in these caps so if you ever want to service it or work on the amplifier you want to make sure you discharge these capacitors so i'm going to show you how to make a tool to discharge the capacitors and how to use that tool as well we're all set up to go ahead and make two different types of capacitor discharge tools this is the one i've been using for uh, many years now it's just an alligator clip with a wire wound resistor in here with a little probe heat shrunk. Um, it seems to work for me pretty good. I've been doing a bunch of videos on tube amps and guitar amps and hi-fi amps and stuff like that and I figured uh, before we get into any more involvement with these amplifiers I should probably show you how to make capacitor discharge tools. Okay we're at the workbench here and I have an old screwdriver that I found with a plastic handle so that'll work good and I also found this metal brown quarter inch round stock so that will work. I went to my parts bin and I pulled out uh, some resistors here that will work. Basically what we're dealing with is with a time constant, an RC, so resistor capacitant time constant. What we don't want is a resistor too big that it takes too long to discharge the capacitors, like you know, 5, 10, 15 seconds. You know, that's, that's just a waste of time. We don't need that. But we also don't want it too small because then it may create a spark or an arc and we could damage some equipment. So we don't want that. We want just the right size. You can do, if you want, you can actually type it into uh, an RC uh, calculator and it will give you an appropriate value. You know, basically you want, you know, around a second of discharge time and that would be quite suitable. So I found that an 820 ohm resistor works good. So I have an 820, 25 water. And then I also have two five waters here. So these add up to about a thousand ohms. So that's good. I picked up some new insulated clips. I have some 600 volt cable, some heat shrink. I have a heat gun that works pretty good and then a soldering gun. So we're all ready to go here. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and sharpen these up. We're ready to go on this one. So we have the 820 ohm, 25 watt resistor. We have some heat shrink. So what we'll do is we will put this right here and then we will put that resistor there and we'll wrap that around there and we'll solder that on. We'll put another one on the back here so it doesn't ground on, a, on itself like that. We will solder the end on we will put another heat shrink to cover that and then we'll put a bigger heat shrink over top of the whole resistor itself. looks pretty good. Nice length. Uh, there's some sharp edges here so I think I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put another layer of this on so we'll have two layers of the yellow. Just stick it off and then I'll shrink that down and then I'll put this one to overlap. So this one's all nicely done. I put some extra pieces here just to taper it down nicely in the back here. So it has a nice comfortable grip. Um, double insulated, triple insulated in a couple sections. And then it has a nice new alligator grip. So this one is done. I like that one. Okay, let's go to a more traditional type of screwdriver one. And we'll do similar. We'll put the heat shrink along here and we will solder that in and we'll run another lead on the backs. So this one's come along nicely too. So we got some shrink wrap here. We have some heat shrink there and we heat shrink that. So that's all together there. 
Um, nothing can touch bare metal. It's all together. So what we'll do is we'll layer up some more heat shrink and we'll put another uh, yellow one across here. And I think I'll do like, like this one, I'll, we'll do a double layer of extra protection. And then we'll go ahead and install the red one on the end. So now I got the second one done. Yeah, it turned out all right. I guess if you didn't have a piece of steel and you just had a screwdriver, this would work too. Um, you know, it works pretty good. It's pretty solid. Uh, the only thing is, is that if you had to get into a tight spot, it may be a little cumbersome because of its, it's a little stubby. So if I had to pick a winner, I would say the first one I made is the winner. I'll show you how it works. So you can see that I have my first tool that I made all hooked up and it's reading 821 ohms. So I got my voltmeter hooked up. We got our DC voltage. We'll turn the amp on. You can see the B plus ramp up. And once the tubes start heating up, you'll see the voltage come back down again to its normal operating voltage. So right now our B plus on this amplifier is 351 volts. So what I'll do now is we'll turn it off and you can see the voltage start to drop and we'll unplug it. So whenever I'm checking voltages, I always to make sure I keep one hand in my pocket at all times. So what we can do is unplug this, is ground the probe out on the chassis, chassis is ground, and then you can go here and just hit. So that's connected right to the filter caps or you can go right underneath here and connect to the filter caps. And you can go ahead and do all of them There we go. And so now we'll go ahead and we'll put our multimeter back on. And you'll see that the voltage is 0 0.5, 0 0.6. So it's pretty much nothing. If you want, we can take it again and you can see it will go right back up to zero. There we go. So I would say that's discharged. Well, I hope this video inspires you to build something similar to this. And remember, there's lethal voltages in there, so you want to make sure those filter caps are discharged before you do anything. So if you're working on tube amps and you have anything to do with them, sit in the bias, making tube amps, please make yourself a discharge tool. Once again, thanks for watching and stay safe. Thank you.